Duo Security, Remote Access VPN with Multi-Factor Authentication and iSposure Workflows. My name is Sandeep Yadav. Uh, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover a combination of AnyConnect, Duo and ICE. Uh, for MFA and posture validation for remote access users I've already uh, covered uh, the uh, workflow one and the related demo uh, in this uh, as promised in this tutorial I'm going to focus on workflow two so let's go ahead and look at uh, the second workflow so in workflow two uh, basically we have a user uh, on on the user laptop he has any connect uh, secure mobility client already installed this is the same user who is already enrolled in duo so he has got duo mobile app installed on his phone now the user tries to make a remote access or a vpn connection to the vpn headed and that's when he would be prompted for username and password so we'll see this uh, the VPN gateway in this scenario is Firepower Threat Defense and uh, from now uh, what I'm going to talk this is where the workflow changes compared to workflow one right so in this workflow right now what we will do is we will configure radius as uh, ICE as a radius authentication server okay in turn what we're going to do is we are going to configure eyes to be pointing to an external radius server which is in this case uh, duo auth proxy which points to active directory or ad client as a primary authentication source so when the username passcode which are submitted in, in submitted in step one are given to duo auth proxy and evaluated against active directory and if found to be valid duo auth proxy is going to make uh, api request to the application uh, for the policy evaluation to the duo cloud for this one must ensure that there is an outbound access from source as duo auth proxy towards uh, duo cloud on tcp443 it's a pure outbound connectivity uh, duo auth proxy uh, will do the policy evaluation and as part of the application policy it is going to ensure that a duo push is sent back to the end user the end user has to ensure that uh, if it's a genuine request he accepts uh, the duo push notification received on his mobile phone and after accepting the duo push <coughs> after accepting the duo push uh, access accept message will be returned at this point we are going to do uh, one more change uh, or, or as part of this workflow we are going to do one more change in ice so whenever uh, we receive uh, access accept message from do auth proxy ice needs to continue to the authorization policy evaluation right and this is where we will be doing posture check where we will check whether the user is compliant or not compliant and accordingly we will do a change of authorization to revise the permission for this same user and if user is found to be compliant then we are going to uh, then the user will be able to successfully connect so let's uh, jump to the demo let's look at these settings where do we do this so so <coughs> So to start with, uh, let's look at this first configuration where uh, ASA or sorry, FTD will be configured uh, to be pointing towards ICE as a radius server. So, so we are back in the pod and this is where I've configured ICE as a radius server. Uh, <coughs> let's go and look at eyesight so okay let me jump uh, here so on ice i have added uh, ftd here is ftd added as a radius client uh, and uh, ice on ftd ice is added as a radius server so this is a uh, change uh, number one 
let's get back to the chain number two so at the part of change two what we are doing is ice is supposed to be pointing towards duo auth proxy and duo auth proxy is eventually uh, configured for primary authentication source as ad so let's get back and look at this change now so here is duo auth proxy service running on this server let's go and look at duo auth proxy configuration file so here is a duo auth proxy configuration file uh, as mentioned ice is pointing towards duo auth proxy as a radius client here is the ip and dot uh, eight and if i show you the ns lookup my i server is 2068 right so 20.60.8 20 happens to be my ice now as i mentioned uh, do auth proxy is further down the line pointing to ad as a primary authentication source which is configured in here so in this segment i'm configuring that my ad server is my primary authentication source and i'm going to uh, read all the users of this particular group <coughs> so this is also uh, taken care following this <coughs> the next uh, change uh, is uh, on ice side so let's go to ice on ice we we are going to configure uh, auth proxy as external radius server so if you check here this is where is auth proxy 20.60.10 and if you check in auth proxy this is where i so this is where the radius peership happens uh, sorry not this one it's this one this is where the radius peership happens uh, between auth proxy and ice uh, server okay once this is done uh, please make note of uh, server timeout keep it uh, 90 second and uh, uh, connection attempts to be uh, around three next you need to configure a radius uh, server sequence where i am going to point to the auth proxy which i defined here under external radius server the one of the important setting is right here under advanced attribute settings which is once you receive a access accept message from auth proxy ice should locally continue with authorization policy evaluation right so once you have done this the last change what you need to do is in policy set so you're going to go to policy set under policy set this is where the policy set defined for ftd and you need to make sure that you change your proxy sequence to two this was defined here so my this sequence points to do auth proxy which is defined here right so with this setting let's now go ahead and uh, test this out so i already have a user connected what we can do is we can disconnect this user <coughs> so this happens to be one of the user and this happens to be another test machine or another user <coughs> so let's use alex as a user over here and you see the user is connected this is where this is where it is saying that it's connecting to ice as part of system scan of the posture module i say connect anyway and this is where posture evaluation happens and the posture check completes the user machine is found to be compliant and you would see the user machine has access and this is where we expect the user to be able to browse the internet as usual he is on vpn all right and uh, so this happens to be uh, the first user if you look at the statistics the vpn is connected is connecting from this public ip right here uh, and the roaming client goes into a disabled state because the user is on vpn uh, this is due to the trusted network detection setting defined in any connect uh, profile uh, 
the system scan will show that the posturing happened the endpoint was compliant the posturing was done by this server and these were the products evaluated as part of the scan summary so this happens to be one uh, user um, and let's just quickly do so we did alex let's do another user eric here <coughs> we expect a uh, I preferably will try to deny this and say it was a mistake and the user is denied access let's try uh, authenticating the same user but with a passphrase so I'm going to just key in the passphrase and click OK and the passphrase was in so we should expect a uh, user Eric to be showing as again uh, this is for the posture so we should expect a uh, user Eric to be uh, connected um, and it should show as passphrase uh, he was allowed basis of passphrase in uh, duo console right so so the very first thing let's do that let's jump to duo console and look to authentications for Alex and Eric and one of them was through passcode right so Alex I had approved it through duo push that's good he was connecting from 12.10 uh, for Eric uh, the first time I did a uh, duo push as you can see here but I denied it saying it was a mistake and then I tried uh, making the second attempt using the passcode uh, as explained uh, passcode will not give you the end user location uh, so this is one now let's get back to identity services engine and let's see what happened here so let me just try to get some more results So, so we see that the posture status has completed uh, for the two users Eric uh, and Alex um, and uh, their endpoints are marked as uh, compliant they both uh, were connected on uh, on uh, FTD firewall which is hosted at 60.1 and uh, and eventually now we can go back to the firewall and look at the VPN so so we can look at the last one of our results and uh, basically uh, this is the second uh, workflow where we are using using uh, so you see Eric and Alex those are uh, two users <coughs> and uh, where did it yeah so this is uh, the second workflow where we are configuring an external radius server which is pointing to dual proxy and then finally making changes in uh, radius um, server sequence and making sure that once this completes we go through the authorization <coughs> so just to review back what we did uh, is right here we take a prompt we we used both push and passcode methods and then we did uh, uh, authorization policy evaluation and basis of which we allowed the end user to connect on this VPN because the user was compliant uh, that's all I had for this video I hope you enjoyed uh, thank you and have a nice day